Welcome to SimplerOptions.com. My name is Don Kaufman. The question we've got this Friday afternoon, and really leading us into next week. Okay, what is it? Do we buy the dip or do we sell the rally? Come on, every trader's got to be thinking that. Whether you're a trader, whether you're an investor, if you got any capital at risk right now with the volatility that we've seen in the last five trading days, okay, let, let's leave them forget that last week even happened and we saw some wild volatility last week but at this point in time you got to look at the market and you got to well we had a huge down day and then we had a huge up day and then we, we kind of had an up day that fell down then we had an up day over here so some wild ranges to get absolutely nowhere on the week I mean pretty much this week started with the S&P's right in the 2070 region where do we end the week pretty much right there all right 2070 2080 region uh, we went a lot of places to get absolutely nowhere. And what should really be on the forefront of your thinking at this point is, is again, are traders really, you know, buying the dip over here right now? We've got, you know, just a few minutes to go to the close. The S&Ps are up 31. I mean, look, we're seeing, you know, one point four percent moves to the upside inside of the s p's however it was only two days ago that we saw an even larger move to the downside when the s p's uh futures actually touched all the way down to 2035 what a difference a day makes and yesterday's failed rally had all of us on edge this morning seeing that is today going to be a failed rally clearly that's not the case that today was a rip roaring up move so let's help you try to decipher what next week is is looking like and that's what we really gotta see is what what are the markets kind of shaping up for one of the first things that I want to kind of reiterate upon the market right now is about the market okay it's not about individual stocks if I look over here at the S&P 500 sector indices this is just you know ultimately the 10 major sectors of the S&P they're all up okay the market is moving the individual stocks and I want to get too specific but watch the futures the futures are really driving order flow to all the stocks okay when volatility starts to grip hold in the marketplace it's not about looking at the fact that oh, Apple's up really big or ooh, Facebook's up really big or ooh, Walmart, it's moving. Listen, there's almost a 95% correlation today in the individual stocks. And here I have the S&P 100. There's like a 95% correlation with the stocks moving in the S&P 500 with what the futures are doing. The futures are going to move the entire market. Everything is tied together through a form of arbitrage. And that ultimately means if the futures move up in a huge way or move down in a huge way, it's just going to drag the market along, kicking and screaming with it. Uh, the next, we'll look over at the NASDAQ. And what are you going to see in the NASDAQ? The exact same thing. Uh, the advancers are not just outpacing the de de decliners. It's all about the advancers over here. It's again, when the market moves, it's moving in relative tandem right now. Now, where I would go to try to assess risk for next week? Got to go to the SPX. Why? The SPX. It's the S&P options, and the options are going to help us decipher what risk is looking like for the next few days. I'm just going to look the next six days out. Now, bear with me for a second. This is a primary expiration cycle coming up. That means these are the standardized contracts, and the SPX contracts, the last day you can trade them, is going to be Thursday okay, afternoon. But they don't actually expire on Thursday afternoon. No, that would be too simple. They they actually expire off of an opening settlement, not the opening price, but an opening settlement, okay, of the what? Friday morning. So it's a little convoluted to look at the six-day options in here, but they're indicating as much as almost a $40 move in the SPX, a 17.6 volatility. Okay. What might even be more appropriate, if you want to see what the entire risk for the week happens to be, you can look at the spiders. Because the spiders, even though they're going to go into an expiration cycle as well, their expiration cycle is more standardized. Their expiration cycle is going to take us through the full seven days okay, of next week. From now until next Friday afternoon, 
gives us the full seven days and that's actually looking like a, a four dollar and thirteen cent move again translated into the SPX it's right around forty one dollars the SPX is pricing to move so why do I even bother bringing this up like a forty one dollar move is being priced in because it's important to know what the previous week looked like inside of the spiders okay and the previous week we'll just go right back to July 3rd I realize it was a holiday but look at the exact day seven day window and look at the similarity okay of volatility volatility was 17.97 this is exactly one week ago and it was pricing in plus or minus a four dollar and almost 50 cent move well this coming week in the spiders it's pricing in slightly less than that not extraordinarily less but slightly less than that so what does that mean for you if you're looking forward to the next week it means don't take your helmet off just yet you could still be in for a rough ride additionally an area that I want to try to help you as much as I possibly can because what's important right now it isn't what we think can happen in the market could we go up absolutely could we go down sure okay volatility just means risk that's it risk for the most part is still on the table yet the volatility futures today backed off pretty substantially so the 11 day volatility futures now are down to 16 gay okay, 70 though that's still relatively speaking elevated and that's what's important about here okay the August volatility is still at about 17 all right the 67 day volatility all the way 67 days out 17 and a half we're still in a relatively elevated stance in terms of volatility once again I reiterate the point that the expected move last week okay is about the same for the expected move in this coming week okay negligibly different so what can we expect I think we're actually in store for a bit more volatility. However, I'd be remiss to say that if you looked at the S&P 500, okay, and you thought about the S&P 500, and you know markets are about to close right now, but you thought about the S&P 500 over the last couple of years. So I can even pull a, a three-year weekly on here, and all I want you to see in the S&P 500 over three years, every time there has been a dip. If you had bought it, you would have been successful over the last three years. I can actually go all the way back into 2011, even technically 2009, and make the argument over there. Every single time that you bought a dip, okay, you would have been rather successful. And there's the bell on the day. However, okay, volatility has picked up a bit at this point. And I feel it noteworthy that some of the action that we've seen you really should be questioning is this going to be a larger move at this point okay I think it's only fair to give respect to the fact that the last two weeks every day we've seen rather extraordinary moves and 30 and 40 point moves are becoming the norm in the S&P's bottom line is if you can't handle the heat of a 40 or 50 point move in the S&P's you got to lighten the load of your position and that's the biggest takeaway from here because in in markets around the world and that's why I say that markets are going to become very unpredictable for the next week why because we're looking at markets around the world forget what happens in Greece we're looking at China okay we're looking at different debt instruments that are going to go on in Europe over there too much of an unpredictable nature I didn't even talk about like earnings that are coming out next week although nobody cares about earnings because the S&P's are moving for 30 and 40 points the one thing we haven't seen we haven't seen a two or three percent move like the rest of the world has seen keep it in the back of your mind over there because again although we've been seeing 30 and 40 point moves in the S&P's that's amounting to what a percent a percent and a half over here we haven't seen some wild two or three percent move in the markets keep it in mind coming into this week whether we go up or down listen we're gonna be very news driven this coming week volatility is absolutely elevated and uh, good luck to you I'll be back on a bit throughout the course of next week I also uh, encourage you to kind of tune in Bruce has got a class coming up next week it's www.simpleroptions.com forward slash 
Black Swan and Bruce's entire discussion is really how to hedge or how to protect yourself from a Black Swan event. So uh, for those of you who never heard that term, the Black Swan, it's uh, simply put, it's an extraordinary move to the downside. The Black Swan, uh, just an extraordinary event in markets. And really, Bruce is going to talk about how to hedge that. That's going to be Thursday, July 16th from 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.